society is a complete opposition to this idea of crisis, the system of surveillance. A crisis which means the most vulnerable people who are sitting in this room are the ones of that particular crisis. A crisis which is called a banking crisis, but a crisis which is not affecting the banking one way or another. So basically, the reason why I'm standing as a such candidate is to stand in opposition, complete opposition, to the public and to this whole idea of austerity. Because, <laughs> because if you think that has any grand analogies, it has largely a subsequent form. What we can say is that these cuts are comparable to an human option on the poor and on the weakest inside society. It's nothing less than that whatsoever. And every single party, that is the Labour Party, that is the Liberal Party, that is UKIP, although if they are a party, they're not in power, but who would have thought so? Who would have thought so with the uh, uh, debate which we've seen this week? But every single party, including the Greens, unfortunately, as well, has sided this whole idea of austerity that is the poor people that have to face the crisis. The trade union and social coalition are completely against the uh, uh, cut completely uh, against the attack on our, on our services, on our, on our public services, against the uh, privatisation in any way of the National Health, of, of the uh, National Health Service, and, and for bringing back into public ownership all the public utilities which, which belong to us in the first place. I'm not going to admit, I stand here and I'm a bit, I'm, I'm a bit disingenuous because I actually do believe in certain cuts. I do believe that trident, a, a piece of scrap metal, should be scrapped. I do believe in that cut because that cut would actually bring a hundred billion pounds worth of worth of money back into our economy. Our economy. So I am a bit disingenuous. So please don't attack me for wanting to scrap trident. <laughs> also, I'm in favour of uh, bank cuts of completely. Um, um, of completely cutting all the bankers' bonuses. <laughs> the bonuses which we've actually seen go ahead while, while the majority of us in the industry are being told that there has to be welfare caps. By Labour, we're being told that there has to be welfare caps on, on, on Social Security uh, spending, that there has to be caps on disability living. Uh, living Disability living allowance has to be scrapped, sorry, not even, uh, not, 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 not cap, but scrapped altogether. We, I'm, I'm a standing as a trade union and social coalition candidate because I'm fed up of the lack of opposition. We provide an opposition to the cuts going on, and what, and what, what anyone else who wants to stand as a trade union and social coalition candidate should actually consider standing. You've got until about 40, if, you, if you're completely against the cuts, if you're for cuts, if you're for the uh, uh, cuts in the National Health Service, if you're for the, um, if you're for the privatisation of the National Health Service, and if you're for the maintaining of the privatisation of the pharmaceutical industry, because that's another thing as well. The task is completely against the nationalisation of, sorry, completely for the nationalisation of the pharmaceutical industry, which, which would which would bring back billions of pounds worth um, in the economy every single year if that was to be nationalised. So <coughs> that, 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 that's my um, uh, introduction in terms of the cuts. Like I say, I'm a bit disingenuous. There's certain cuts which have to take place. There needs to be cuts in, bon uh, cuts in bonuses, cuts in silence, uh, cuts in silence, <coughs> and cuts certainly in every single tax haven where the rich have decided to store their money what they make the poor people poorer in this country. <laughs>
doing that, it doesn't work capability assessments and mess that ain't got. I mean, the word work program is being made a mess of. You know, this government has declared war on people with borough, this government has declared war in particular on, people, on disabled people. And I think we have to do things that have provided an alternative to that. And then the point of this local action is to provide some choice, and we need to go on to provide an alternative to that. So, what are we doing as a council? Because, you know, perhaps unlike anyone else on this record, I actually have, I, I have, on this table, I actually have a track record to defend, which I'm very happy to do. But it's a pity Terry Stacey isn't here. Because if yeah. that's Mark, Mark has had the good grace so much this evening and to be, you know, to be quick on his party views and I'll be good, good luck to him. <laughs> Terry, on the other hand, has something else to do. Yeah. And it's almost like the local representatives of the government, you know, we've got the blue Tories here, the yellow Tories couldn't quite make it along. And so, you know, I think people are very clear of, you know, where, who is happy to be held to account and who, who is, and I am very happy to be held to account for my, for my council's record. So, we are one of only 19 councils in the whole country to continue to offer social care to people with moderate needs. I'm proud of that. We're the first council in the whole country to offer the London living wage to the home care that so many people in this room benefit from. And I'm proud, and I'm proud of that. We are one of the very few councils that continually got the public services back in hand. And I'm very proud of that. We brought back in our education services. We brought back in our housing services. We're working to move back in with our public health services. You know, this is an agenda that this is the Labour Council had that's actually making a difference for people. And my favourite thing was well, the first council in 100 years to get a council own ground run power station operating in the south of this borough, giving a £300 a year discount on their fuel bill for all the people who live around it. And that's the agenda that's really good. And that's the agenda that we've brought up across the world. We know you for a purpose. Thank you. So, what is, like, uh, it's a general way for us. I'm happy to be asked questions about this in more detail. Think about many councillors. You know, like, everything goes right all the time. And people who've got interested in issues are very happy for us to break with me. But the fact is that we've got a different agenda here. Because this election represents a choice. And people in this room will be said when you vote on the 20th of May, whether you like it or not, will be sending the signal to David Cameron and Andy Ray. We'll either be my relative Tory Liberal sending a signal to David Cameron and Nick Ray that what we're doing is all right. It's mine. It's an attack on the state of people. That, that's okay. Because, you know, we are a high profile borough and people want to, you know, the, the number of thousand damage to these strategies, I know, and I'm looking at the results in borough like ours to see what the public think of their agenda. And so a vote blue or yellow for blue or yellow for this, however, however constructed, will be a vote send the signal to Fagan Cameron to carry on this fight. And I vote for leaving the Labour Party as the serious opposition to the government's agenda. If the vote to say stop it, the attack has got to end, and then the vote for a local Labour Party in this England to stir up the disabled people, the first council in the country to declare no confidence in ACOS, a council that's been better to our advice services, and a council that stood steadfastly stood with disabled people all the way through the cut, and we will say, Mm -hmm. And that's where David Fagan Cameron, no, this is your last chance for the general election to send that message to Fagan Cameron that now is the time to start and the vote for him to know there's going to be serious ways to do that. So I look forward to working with you all on the doorstep. I look forward to fighting with you all in the fight ahead. And you should know, because of our track record, it means we have to stand behind disabled people in this borough. And we'll go on fighting with you, we'll go on fighting to send a message to this government that they have to stop it. What a turnout. I'm here with the task hustings and everything else with the uh, DPAC, disabled people against the cuts.
Sorry. Will you commit to set up and fund a disabled resident forum that will be consulted on all matters of policy? Thank you. How will your party, sorry, my name is Craig. How will your party commit to continue to fund the advice services in Eastlington at the current levels and improve them? When will you increase funding given that need, needs to be increased? Thank you.
was to set up a citizen response bureau in one of the most high profile areas of the borough on Upper Street and to fund that properly. And this borough now has a CAB, which is seeing thousands and thousands of people a year give them vital help as a result of the, the attack on living standards we've seen over the last few years. We've got the law to do fantastic work and we help them to get fantastic, much better new premises over the last few years. We've got Islington people's rights to work very carefully with. This borough now has a much better advice offer than it did when we were elected in 2010. And that's a bit of our track record that I'm particularly pleased about. And I think, you know, we, we, we need to protect that. Now, I'm not going to now I'm not going to promise at this point to do the impossible. You know, I'm not going to I'm not going to come here and stand up and promise you that we are going to keep funding everything the council comes from. We know the cuts coming down from this government means that there are going to be things that we have to stop doing. That's the fact. I'm sorry, you know, I've got to go be honest with you. If I said anything else, I'd be lying. So, what are we going to do? Well, advice services are a real priority for us, and we're going to try to protect those advice services as much as we possibly can. It may mean we have to do something differently. It may mean we have to work with those organisations. But I'm really clear that under the Labour Council, when people need advice, there will be advice and support there for them. Because that is a basic right of people living in the 21st century, in this one of the richest cities on earth, that there should be that kind of support and advice for people. And I would say under the Labour Council that that support and advice will be there. Thank you. The first uh, question was um, how is the council, does the council still promote support of people with disabled uh, uh, residents? Um, I, I used to be a council officer for Camden Council and that used to be my job, going around promoting a, a, a particular grant, which has now been cut, by the way, for promoting of, uh, uh, of um, disability awareness amongst the staff. That, that's absolutely essential, and, and I, I think the question has actually been put in another way, because uh, Camden Council um, used to have a, a, a lot of disabled <coughs> staff working for it. No, this isn't, this isn't a question which you asked on the outside, you know, how, how will uh, Camden or how will Islington um, uh, uh, staff be uh, prevent to be more aware of disabled people? Disabled people are as much a part of staff and uh, are, are the working group of any local authority, um, of any, any local authority within, uh, uh, within the country. And it should be seen as how you promote, um, the, the question should be of, of uh, how this is regularly promoted on not just the this, you know, disabled awareness week or day and so on, but how it's regularly promoted for every new member of staff coming into uh, uh, coming into um, uh, uh, in the agreement in council. I, I would stand completely for that, but as an active equality, um, as a, a quality uh, piece, of, um, uh, piece of action, that has to be done on, on every induction of any staff member in Camden Council, but it also has to be linked up with fighting the cut. You can have, you can have you can't have any uh, a policy agenda which doesn't take into account the resources needed to back up that particular uh, that particular policy. So yes, I'm all in favour of promoting a policy and making uh, and making sure as a um, as a, uh, a, a councillor that that is totally uh, high on the agenda for any uh, for um, any uh, uh, local local authority. Um, funding disabled residents forum. I always thought that the uh, disabled residents forum uh, already funded. Within Islington, I always uh, I, I thought that the uh, and I always thought that the disabled uh, forum was actually funded from this building. Um, but there was a forum which there was, came at, there was a forum called Disability Equality um, Performance, which and this was a role of last year. Oh right, okay. So, yeah, so, well, I'd want to honour that. Okay, so that's what um, the, the, the question, um, the sort of the question. Um, I don't know how to answer that particular question, but that is that. Can that, you put um, the mic up? That should be the new. Sorry, that should be the new. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, completely the issue. Um, and from the advice services again, advice services. It's great that that uh, Islington has a CAB in the same one of the central streets within the uh, within the borough, but we also have to understand that the new village cut, which are at, which are absolutely young. Um, are absolutely shocking throughout uh, the UK. We have to fight against these disability cuts. Sorry. We have to fight against the legal aid cuts which are taking uh, which are taking place, which is uh, which are an attempt to try to deny us our very basic of rights in terms of our ability, in terms of our um, it, it, and um, it, uh, in terms of our uh, our in terms of our rights generally speaking. So tough to trace in the social cuts um coalition um stand completely against Completely against the privatisation of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, 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 local authority uh, local authority services, and completely against the 
Yes. Yes, we have. Okay. Well, going forward, that um, uh, everyone said pretty much has everything, but um, so in the interest of hearing the next questions, I won't even take take a long time. Um, I think the first two questions were about attitude within the council, and those are things that can be committed to without any reference to cut. Ensuring that every employee develops disability and equality awareness is about the culture within the council, and the Green Party absolutely supports the idea of having a, a working culture among all employees that um, uh, disability and equality awareness are just completely um, sort of, you know, ingrained in the, in the blood of the organisation. Um, in terms of a disabled residence forum, I, I agree it would be great to abolish the um, forum that got abolished um, last year or the year before. Um, it, it is something though, a, 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 a forum, it, it feels like something that the the cost of it shouldn't be that huge, and it may be something that could be organised through reorganising existing services and making it happen. So I think if there's a will to do it, it should be possible to make that happen. So, um, and as I said when I stood up at the very beginning, being realistic, we're not going to be um, in charge of the council budget. So, you know, I can say anything, I can tell you that, yes, of course, we would do it, but, um, but you wouldn't believe me. So, uh, but I do think that that is something that is realistic for whoever is running the council to be able to, to manage by reorganising things and doing things differently. In terms of continued defined services, that is obviously critical, and there has to be a way to, to manage within the, the, what, you know, the cuts that are coming down on this council, I think, the, I think the council has been managing the impact of the cut really well. And I think that they have, you know, I think you know, the Greens don't always um, agree with Labour, but, um, but we do um, support what Labour is doing. And I think, you know, the way that they have managed to minimise the impact of the cut on people in Islington is, has, you know, is, 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 is really good. And I think, um, you know, when Richard says he's just in the he can't absolutely promise that there will be no cuts to existing advice services, it is probably right. But we do need to make sure that if the cuts happen, if further cuts happen within advice services, that advice is available in some way for people, that everyone who needs advice is able to get it. And there has to be a way to manage our services in order to make that possible. Okay, back in a sec. It's going to be the uh, next set of questions. Uh,